So Carlo asked if I did a, if I do a quick one minute uh, session on something trauma related. So it was something that sprung to mind. This usually is one of the things that's very, very tenuous. A lot of folks get very intimidated by managing a surgical airway and a pediatric patient. Actually, this procedure is pretty darn easy. Um, so you break out all the stuff, kind of play with it a little bit. And then when I actually had to use these, I actually kept a kit together of the key components that I needed. Because when you fumble around and you try to find all this stuff in the heat of the moment, it's just a mess. So you need to have a little foresight. You put all this stuff together, you kind of keep it on your rig or somewhere in case you ever have a bad day and you need to do this. And if you've got it all put together, you, know, you, can, you can do this very easily. So, you know, a surgical airway in a child is basically going to be a needle crack. So you need to take your, your AMP manual out, review your anatomy, find out where your cricothyroid membrane is. Once you anatomically have that located, the procedure is pretty easy. So you're going to take a 14 or 16 gauge angiocath that's on like a syringe. So we can kind of aspirate as we kind of penetrate the skin. You can find your landmarks, and I can't you know, completely do this on the dummy, but I can kind of demonstrate. So you use this as a fulcrum, you find your landmark, and then you pierce the skin. If you want to make a little incision beforehand, that's fine, but you want to pierce the skin, and when you start to pierce the skin, you steady it up with this hand, you kind of direct it a little bit towards the feet, okay? You don't go straight, you sort of don't go up, you direct it downward just a little bit, and as you're starting to pierce through the skin and you start to pierce through the trachea, you're aspirating and the minute you hit money, you'll see that hub go boom. You know you're in and then that's when you slide your angiocath down into there. And this is really is an easy procedure, I promise you. So from here, when you have your angiocath on, you want to get a 3.0 ET tube adapter. And again, that's why you want to kind of put all this together before you ever need to do this. And then this mounts right onto here. And then what I typically do to secure it, I'll take a Tegaderm and I'll just kind of put it over the entire apparatus on the patient's neck. Take my knife or scalpel, kind of nick it and it kind of holds it into place and then you can hook it up to an ambu bag, a pediatric ambu bag, and it's money. You just did something that probably 95% of EMS crews can't do or are too intimidated to do. So, all right, any questions? You guys know where I live? Come see me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yep. So 302. So I went ahead and tried Restmore, got it offline, and um, I had issues sleeping. So um, yeah, I fell asleep normal, but I actually did sleep through the whole night and not toss and turn and wake up like I normally do, and I felt at ease and uh, felt like I had a good night's rest. <laughs>